Let's talk about crosswind sensitivity today. Why are some cars more sensitive to crosswind than others? How does the sensitivity of a car change? And what factors are important to improve crosswind behavior? First of all, we look at three different cars. A van, a hatchback and a 911. The first important factor is the location of their center of gravity. So let's say the van is unloaded. It has engine and gearbox at the front, so the weight distribution is front biased. So let's say the COG is here. The hatchback has engine and gearbox on the front axle and front rear drive. So the COG is closer to the front too. Let's say here. The 911 on the other hand has gearbox and engine at the back and rear wheel drive, so more than 60% of the weight are at the back. Let's say the COG is here. The second important factor is the aerodynamic center. Now what is that? If you imagine to push a plate against the wind with one finger and it stays level, that is your aerodynamic center. So for a rectangular it's here, for a triangle it's here. For cars, not all the surfaces are straight and they are rounder and sharper edges, but to simplify things we just look at the side view and locate their aerodynamic center. So for the van it could be here, for the hatchback here and for the 911 here. Why do we need these two factors? Because the crosswind acts at the aerodynamic center and turns the car around the center of gravity. So let's take our goal first. The center of gravity sits in front of the aerodynamic center. So if we come into a crosswind situation, the car turns around the COG and turns itself into the wind. That means that the car points its nose into the wind and stays on the road. Or in other words, the car counteracts crosswind without any driver input. So that's a pretty safe concept. Now let's have a look at the 911. Here, the aerodynamic center sits in front of the COG. That means the crosswind pushes at the aerodynamic center and the car again turns around the COG, but this time the other way around, away from the crosswind. This concept increases crosswind sensitivity and literally blows the car away. An interesting case is the van. Because of the high loading capacity, the COG changes quite dramatically between loaded and unloaded. Accordingly, crosswind behavior changes. So here is our van with the unloaded COG, which is in front of the aerodynamic center. The crosswind blows and turns the van into the wind. It's easy to control for the driver. The van counteracts crosswind automatically. Now we load the van and the COG moves further back. At one point, the COG will be at the same X position as the aero center. In that case, there is no lever arm for the wind to turn the vehicle either side and the car stays neutral. You would still need to steer against the wind as the driver, because the car isn't helping you like the hatchback, but you don't need to steer as much as in the 911, and the car doesn't make the situation any worse. Now we load the van further and the COG moves further back behind the aero center. Now the sensitivity turned around. Instead of turning into the wind and helping the driver, the van will now turn with the wind, which can cause dangerous situations. Also, the further both points are away from each other, the longer is the lever arm and hence the moment to turn the car. As you might have noticed, there is also a distance in Z between both points, which can overturn a vehicle. That is a serious problem for trucks because the distance between the two points is usually quite big and hence the lever arm long. If this distance in Z is large enough, trucks can overturn at heavy winds. And as you know now, aerodynamic center stays at the same position and the COG is low when the truck is unloaded. So the highest risk of overturning aerodynamically is when the truck is unloaded. Now let's have a look at record cars. Crosswind is a serious problem, especially for record cars traveling at high speeds. 
In 1938, Germany's top Grand Prix driver Bernd Rosemeyer died in an Auto Union record car at 430 km per hour on the Autobahn after he passed a clearing and crosswind blew him off the track. The nose-heavy front-engined Mercedes record car could go through the track without crashing just minutes before. The mid-engined Auto Union couldn't. So what if I have a slick record car with a certain COG that I don't want to change but I want to improve crosswind behavior. I move the aerodynamic center position to the back. So how can I do that? I simply mount a vertical shark fin at the back. It doesn't just stabilize the car at high speeds, it also moves the aerodynamic center backwards and helps to turn the car into the wind once it's hit by crosswind. So I hope you enjoyed this explanation and let me know what other topics you're interested in. See you at the next video.